Today we're doing a feature on catching big carp down the edge of Allcroft fisheries in Retford. As probably most of you are aware, I'm a Retford guy. I was born and bred here, lived here all my life. But this place is where I started my carp fishing. This is where it all begun for me some oh, 30 years ago. Um, I've always been a guy that wanted to fish with big fish, even when I was fishing my, my uh, coarse fish matches. I've always liked to fish for fish that like to pull back, whether it be a big bream, whether it be a carp or a tench. I've always loved that. Don't get me wrong, roach are my favourite fish, but this is what I like to do. This is what I, I, I grew up doing. Now, originally this place was full of roach and skimmers and hybrids and introduced carp slowly and steady to where it became a premier carp fishery in the UK. It's a big water with big fish. Fish grow really big in here, 20 pound plus. And they live in the edges. It's got shallow water close in. There's not four foot and five foot, it's shallow water. So they always tend to come in in the evening. So that's what we're doing today. We're talking about catching these big fish down the edges with the pole. Primarily trying to catch the really big fish, trying to keep things really simple, fishing strong, but not stupid gear. Now, when I say strong, but not stupid, my elastic's not really strong. It's only a 14's elastic, but my, my main line is a 20, an 020, and I'm fishing a 14, a really big, strong up that's not gonna let me down. Now, the reason I don't use strong elastics is some of these fish in here go a bit. It's shallow water in the edge, and when they decide to shoot off, if you're fishing really strong, powerful elastic, something will give. So it's about protecting the equipment that you're using and you'll still get your fishing. And at the end of the day, we're here fishing. We're not here catching. We're trying to catch fish and enjoy a sport as well as catch a good weight of fish. So we'll start at the business end. For me, that's your pole. I'm fishing with a, a Garbolino Evo, UK1 Evo today. Uh, it will not let you down, it's strong, it's light, and it's powerful enough for this type of fishing with the type of elastic I'm doing, it's balancing it upright. Now down to my top kit. My top kit's a power carp top kit, and the elastic running through it is Bazoo Carp 12 to 16 lime green. It's a, quite a powerful one, but it, it's got a, plenty of give in it. So it's always gonna keep you in control of your fish, but it's gonna have plenty of power to bring them back towards you. So it's a big, strong elastic. Now, I'm not fishing too stupid elastic, for a simple reason, I'm fishing on a match pole as well. From that, I'm fishing with a uh, Fluoro Power Carp line, an 020. Now, my float is a DC CO2. It's a strong, purposely built for fishing that edge with a big, thick bristle and a wire connector on the top to pull your line through so it doesn't pull uh, any eyes out or anything like that. It's a really strong float. Designed for fishing down there. Short and stubby bristle, short body, but it takes 0.3 or 0.4 of a gram. It's really heavy to keep your bait where you want it to be in one place. You don't want it wafting about with these big carpers that are coming in twos and threes and foul looking one because they are seriously big in here. Now, we'll talk about shotting these floats out on this type of rig for fishing close in. I'm fishing a 0.4, so I've got all my bulk close together, only probably three or four inches away from my hook. You don't want to be striking at line bites. Sometimes it's inevitable because the fish just keep going and pull it, the elastic out. But you want to be waiting for a positive bite that pulls it under and is not wafting about and catching on, a, on fins of fish. So I'm fishing quite direct, quite heavy, and trying to nail it to the bottom and just leave a small amount of line to move about. Now down to bait. Really cheap, really easy, really simple to do. Two tins of meat. Two tins of corn, as simple as that. Cut with a big meat cutter if you've got one, a 10 milli meat cutter so it's big and not going to be blown about. The fishery pellets, quite simple, micro, soaked, really easy and simple. Just a bag of micro pellets soaked up. Mix them all together and put them in. Put, I put three in to start me off and then after what, every one or two fish, give them another pot. One of the secrets of catching fish down the edge is knowing when to feed again. Sometimes, you, after every fish, you have to feed. Sometimes you can get away with two or three. It's, it's down to suck it and see. But quite often, once you start catching, if it, you get two or three minutes without an indication, put another pot in or maybe two pots. Even tap the top with your pot, give it a good boshing in. So fish think it's more food going in and it'll bring them straight to you. Now we're down to plumbing up. Now, if this was a match today, one thing you don't want to be is sat on your box, Get your rig out, put it on, and go down six or eight metres down your side and it's, it's this deep. And then you go another three metres and it's still that deep. I'm looking for a reasonable depth of 18 inch in this place. So what I do is, my first thing I do is get my landing net handle out. Put my head on, uh, without my head on, walk down 
and just try and find a nice clear bit with that before I start. Then I go on my box and then I plumb up and look for my, my 18 inch to two foot. So I'm not getting fouled up in places where there's uh, bits of wood, there's branches, there's uh, uh, under underwater obstructions that you can't see. So I'm just going down having a feel. Then I plumb up and have a good plumb about with a big plumb it to see if there's any drop offs. Because last thing you want to be doing is feeding it on a shallow peg that's 18 inches deep and three or four inches away it drops off really quickly. You don't want that, you want a nice even flat space to catch your fish on. For this type of fishing, especially in here where you can catch eight fish for 120, 130 pounds, you need a big net. You don't want, in a match competition, what you don't want to be doing is trying to shuffle fish into your net. You want to be able to get them in straight away, quickly and easy. So amount of times I see people with a small net trying to shuffle a 10 pounder in. Yes, they nearly always get them out. But there's lots of times when they're teetering on the edge and swim off again and have another go. So now you've got another 10 minute battle to get it back where you want it. Have a big net to get them in quickly. Yes, they take a bit more getting out and unhooking in your net because there's more room to, for them to move about. But trap them between your legs. Use your knees, trap them between your legs till you get the hook out nice and safe and secure. Don't let them bang on bottom and then tip them in your net. Really simple, really easy, but you'll get them in a lot, lot quicker with a big net. So now we've, we've fed up, we've put all this bait in. We're going out for a first drop in. We've got our maggots on, so we ship out, lower it in. Don't lay it out, lower it straight down the hole. Then you're not going to lay it across one of them backs of one of them big fish that's there straight away. Him spook off and he's going, to, he's going to hook you. Just lay it straight in. Now, there's another thing that we do quite often. Some people know, some people do it and don't know what they're doing. We call it the Belinji Bounce. It started many, many years ago down at Whiteacres. Where you lower it in, you lift it up and just lower it slowly down. People do it out, but very few people do it when they're fishing down the edge. If you've got one carp in your peg and it sees that bait on, in, in front of it as it lowers down, it entices them into taking it. So remember the Belinji bounce. It works everywhere and it especially works here. So now we've hooked his fish. We're going to play it. Now, last thing you want to be doing is trying to pull its head off. You've got to give it some respect because these fish sometimes in here fool you into thinking they're small fish. So just give it a second or two, see which direction it's going and give it an angle. What I mean by an angle, you don't want your pole facing straight at your elastic straight out. You want to give it an angle so you can keep an idea where it's going, but keep your pole moving. Don't leave, keep it steady. You need to walk it. You're walking a big dog. So you just pull him around nice and gently, follow your elastic round and slowly bring it back. When you come to break off to land, grab your puller and straight away ease some elastic out and wait and feel. You can actually feel if it's pulling, stop doing let him come back to you as he starts to come back. Ease some more elastic out, but keep your pole tip low down wherever possible. And at the very last minute, as he's in the side, wait for him. Just wait for him to give up a little bit and then lift him and hopefully you'll have him first time. Not always, but quite often you can get him first time like that because you don't know which, which way to go, what's happening to him. You've caught him off guard. So just remember, don't pull too quick, don't pull too hard, but keep a nice steady even pull on him. Keep him moving and keep him coming towards you. There we are folks, that's edge fishing for you. Really simple, really easy, really cheap, but very, very rewarding. Now for any of this tackle that anybody's interested in, in trying or, or having a play with or even buying or purchasing, go down to your local Gabolino stockies, the, the UK, uh, UK wide.